Give thanks. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. If you are worshiping with us online, good morning, good morning to you as well. We have entered into the house of God to worship. And if you're worshiping with us online, that means that you have entered into this space to worship as well. And so I'm going to ask at this time, if you would please stand along with us, if you are able for our call to worship. Good morning. Good morning. We have gathered to worship the Lord. God's ways are untraceable. And we will continue to walk by faith, trusting in God. When God calls us to sacrifice, we will trust God with our offerings and by faith follow God. Please join in our opening song. You may be seated. This morning's scripture lesson is from the book of Genesis, chapter 22, verses 1 through 16. 
Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to Abraham, Here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, who you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and a knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, replied Abraham. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar, altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar, on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram, and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will provide. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declare the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The unison prayer is found in your bulletin. Let's join together in this prayer. God of grace, you call us to be obedient, to follow you in all things. You call us to trust you with our all. We confess that we have not trust our sacrifices with you. Give us the courage to faithfully follow your leading, even when we cannot see the outcome. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Today's Touch by God is an anthem from our praise choir.
let's, let's give them a, a round of applause again for reminding us that Christ the Lord is coming. We are in the season of Advent, and so it's hard to believe that, as I say, December is right around the corner. Yeah. At this time, uh, we're going to prepare for our announcements. Um, one of the things that uh, I wanted to share with you, if you have not already heard, is the passing of Ms. Ethel Schuler, uh, who passed away this past uh, Wednesday. Uh, so the family is still in process of making arrangements, and so as soon as that information is received, I will uh, share that information with the congregation. Uh, also, I want to remind us about our friend of the week, uh, Ms. Joyce uh, Pyle, who uh, please reach out to uh, Ms. Joyce by call or send in a card to remind her that we are thinking of her uh, here at Hamilton. And so um, uh, one of the things that I know is, is that we take for granted uh, the, the blessing in being present. And so uh, I want to make sure that because we're still in this uh, pandemic, that people realize that we have not forgotten about them as a ministry. And so uh, when I reach out to uh, members who have not been to church, uh, you will be amazed at how excited and I, you can hear the joy in their voices as I talk with them. Uh, the fact of knowing that we are still thinking about them and that we are praying for them. And so please, please, please uh, continue to reach out and to pray for our members who are homebound and for those who are, are not uh, in worship, in person worship, nor worshiping online with us. As you can see, uh, one of the things that I did uh, this past week, I sent an uh, email out to all of the leaders. Uh, we are in the process of, process of creating a 2022 uh, church calendar. And so if you, are, uh, if you know of an event or a ministry activity that's coming up in 2022, please email uh, the church office uh, with that information. You may not know the exact date, but you may know the month that it takes place in. And so please uh, share that information with us. What we're trying to do is to be more effective in how we do um, ministry as well as how we do business here at the church. And so we wanna make sure that we're giving each event uh, the um, adequate amount of time to prepare and to advertise for it. And so please, 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 if you know of an event that is that will come up in 2022 that you may be responsible for or someone else, uh, please share that information with us. Uh, mark your calendars. You see it there uh, for our upcoming event in De events in December. As you can see, December is pretty busy. Uh, you have the dates uh, for the Blue Christmas, uh, as well as on December 19th, we will have an ugly Christmas uh, sweater Sunday. And so uh, if you have one, you know, shake the dirt off and, and put it on uh, because we're going to have a good time. I'll be taking pictures that, that day so that we can post on the website and on our social media sites. And so uh, I'm looking for, uh, for a good time. And so if someone is missing, if they're traveling on this weekend, please share that information with them so that they're aware of what's going on. Uh, the other thing that you have in your bulletin, you have a yellow sheet of paper. On last week, Ms. Jenny made the announcement about the Aslan Youth Ministry Ministries. And I want to say thank you so much for all of you that uh, selected children to bless for this holiday season. Uh, she shared that all of their names were taken on last week. And so thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your generosity. Uh, and there is a family that's in need of our help. And so this yellow sheet of paper that you have in your bulletin, it has that family's information on it. And so if you're worshiping with us online and you're wondering how you can be a blessing to this family, uh, what you can do is log on to the church website and there's a form that you can complete there. And you just select the boxes for what you would like to uh, purchase to bless this family uh, for the holiday season. And so if you're in need of how to do that online, please reach out to me or someone, uh, Katie in the office, and we will help you with that. And so uh, also, uh, Ms. Jenny, I believe, had some sign-up sheets in the hallway. And so if you're interested in signing up here, or if you're uh, here today, you can do that as well. Uh, the other thing that we are doing is, is uh, decorating the sanctuary as well as the hallway for Christmas. And so on Friday, December the 3rd, this information is not in your bulletin. On Friday, December the 3rd at 1 p.m., if you would like to help with decorating uh, the sanctuary as well as uh, the hallway, please join us here at 1 p.m. on this coming Friday, December the 3rd, uh, to help decorate the sanctuary in the hallway. 
Uh, I believe that's all of my announcements at this time. If I have missed anything, please, please, please let me know. But I believe at this time, this is all of the announcements that we have. During this portion of our worship experience, this is where we share the peace of Christ uh, with our brothers and sisters. And so I'm going to ask if you would, if you would please stand, uh, if you would pass the peace of Christ with your brother and sister. Remember that we are still in a pandemic. So as I always say, we can give a head nod, a fist pound, uh, wave at someone from across the room to let them know that you see them and to share the peace of Christ with them. The peace of Christ be with you. also with you. You know what I thought about? I thought about you, too. Trust and obey. At this time, um, this is our prayer time uh, in our worship experience. This is the time where we go to God to ask God to show up 
in the midst of what we're going through. This, this is the time where we stand in the gap for others who are struggling. This is the time that we call out to God on behalf of our communities and, and our country. And so as you can see on the screen, there are already uh, names listed there. But at this time, I'm going to ask if you have other prayer requests, if you would call out their names. If you're worshiping with us online, you can enter in the chat your, your prayer requests and whomever may be on your heart. As I shared on last week that God hears, the, hears our responses, our, our requests. God hears us when we, we ask for help. God, God even knows the things that we do not even ask out loud. God deals with the matters of our heart. And so at this time, I'm going to ask that you would lift up those individuals or those concerns that you may have. Sue, Mary. I'm just going to say, if you have a prayer request, just go ahead and say it out loud. We're not going to individual people anymore. Just go ahead and say it. I, I hear you. I'm going to respond after you uh, say it. Does any Say it again. Carl. Carl and Patty. Are there any other prayer requests? Evelyn. Evelyn. Reimer. 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 Are there any? Say that again. Praise report for Chuck Otten. He's doing well. Praise God. Are there any other prayer requests? We're going to continue to lift up the Schuler family and the passing of Miss Ethel. We want to lift up um, the state of our, our country. Uh, because we're still dealing with uh, racial and social injustices, and so we want to make sure that we stay in prayer. We want to lift up uh, our children and to continue to keep them safe um, because we're still in the middle of a pandemic. And I know that masks are, are challenging for people, but our, our little people need our help because many of them are not vaccinated, and the number of children contracting COVID and being exposed to COVID is increasing. And so I want to keep our, our children in our prayers. Are there any other prayer concerns? I'm going to pray for families who are grieving in this time of the year. There are many families that are, are struggling with the loss of a loved one and remembering the life of a loved one and they're, they're, they're having a hard time and so we want to keep them in our prayers. Are there any other prayer concerns? Miss e Ethel? Yes, ma'am. We're going to keep our family, Miss Ethel's family in prayer. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks and we give you praise, God, for what you have already done. God, we give you thanks for, God, what you are about to do. God, we thank you that even before the words left our, our lips, God, you already had angels dispensing them to your ear. God, we thank you that you are the God who hears the concerns and cares of our heart. God, we thank you that you are the God who, who knows about the things that we are afraid to speak. And so, God, we ask right now that there is some family wondering what they're going to do this holiday season. God, we're going to ask that you would touch the hearts of your people and that you would be a blessing to them. God, there is someone, God, dealing with depression. God, we're going to ask that you would touch their mind. Your word tells us, God, that you are a God who never fails. Your word tells us that you are a hedge of protection. Your word tells us that you are a heart fixer. 
And so, God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you will do what you've always done, and that is be God. We pray right now, God, that you would show up in the midst of everything that we're going through. God, we pray right now, God, for systems of injustice and oppression that still exist in this country and in our communities, God. Have your way, oh God. God, we pray that uh, you will be a uh, revelation, God, into the midst of solving this problem with this uh, virus. God, protect our children, God. Pr protect them, God, from exposure. Protect them, that those who are suffering from COVID, God. Be with us, God, in this time. Be with us in this wilderness experience. God, remind us that you said you would never leave nor forsake us. God, someone is in the hospital, God, that, that are waiting, they're waiting on you to stop by. And so, God, we say, have your way, oh God. Remind them, God, the peace that just entered their room, that it is you that is present there. Remind them, God, that you have never left them nor forsaken them. God, we ask this all. Remind us that we are the light in the midst of this darkness. God, we ask it all, and in Jesus' name we pray. God, you are our only hope. You are the only solution to the problem. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our God in heaven. Amen. Amen and amen. Holy is your name. That's why we have gathered here this, this morning, because we believe that God's name, that God is holy. Amen? amen. All right. We're going to have to wake up this morning. We're going to have to get a hallelujah or something this morning. Can I get a hallelujah praise this morning? <laughs> Amen. I, I know we've had a long weekend and we still may have uh, some leftovers at the house that may slow us down on to, that may have slowed us down on today, but we're going to get a little bit more excited about the Lord. Amen? Amen. All right. At the beginning of this month, I started a sermon series entitled uh, Generous Life. I shared with you a couple of Sundays ago that as I was uh, having conversation with uh, Mr. Jim, we talked about uh, that Hamilton typically completes a, a contribution card, a commitment card, and uh, in the month of November, and, and submit it. And that's how we, uh, the church, determine what the budget is for this year, for the year that's uh, coming up. And I share with him that God is up to something. That this 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 season, th that God is is inter in, is doing something more than just having us to complete a card. I believe that this season that we're in, that, that God is, is, is calling us to, to what I like to say, a new normal, a new place. And so this, this sermon series uh, was me listening to, to God and, and God saying uh, that there's something more that I want for my people. 
And so on today, I'm going to uh, preach the last sermon uh, in this sermon series. Uh, On next Sunday, I will start with uh, the Advent. I know today is the first Sunday of Advent, but I had to be obedient to uh, God because one of the things that I know is, is that God doesn't deal with our calendar. God is on God's own time. God God doesn't deal with chronos. God deals with kairos. That means God's timing. And so I wanted to make sure that I was obedient to what God had called me to do in this season. And so today my sermon title is going to be God said it and I believe it. God said it and I believe it. You you have already heard the scripture read. Uh, Uh, This morning, you've heard uh, Mr. Mark read the scripture earlier, and so I'm not going to uh, read it again, but I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to take my assignment for today. Let us pray. God of good news, we give you thanks once again for the opportunity to come before you and to sit at your feet. God, we thank you that you love us so much, God, that you would open your heart to us and make it known to the world. God, I say, have your way in this moment, God. Your your people came to hear from you, oh God. I am only the instrument that you have chosen to stand. And so I just say, have your way with me, oh God. God, I surrender my will to you. God, I surrender my mind to you, God. Speak through me and use me how you will. God, so that someone's life will be saved on today, God, and someone's life will be transformed. God, we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. God said it, and I believe it. C.S. Lewis said, to have faith in Christ means trying to do all that God says. There is no sense in saying that we trust a person if we do not take his or her, her advice. If we have really handed ourselves over to Jesus, it means we are trying to obey God. Faith in Christ is living a new way, a less worried way. He goes on to say, faith in Christ is loving like Jesus because the first faint glimmer of heaven is already inside each of us, end quote. Faith calls us to abandon everything we think we know about God. When we walk by faith and not by sight, God's transformative power shifts our perspective from I think I can to I know God will. Faith shifts our perception from boasting about what we have done to professing that only God can choose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. I don't know about you, but sometimes I found myself trying to apply logic in situations where I I knew in the natural one plus one was not going to amount to the answer I was looking for. Sometimes I I found myself in situations where I've heard God speak and it has left me wondering how God God, God, how how are you going to to get me out of this? I I don't know about you, but maybe the person sitting in your seat can be honest this morning. Someone knows something about God showing up in situations, and it just doesn't seem logical. There have been times when God's instructions does not line up with what God has shown us. There, There have been times where we have prayed and asked God for one thing and in one season of our lives and in the next season of our lives, God is asking us to sacrifice it. God, uh, someone knows God, uh, they prayed this prayer. I, God, I pray for this uh, and now that I have it, you want me to do what with it? God, I'm walking by faith, and uh, this view is, uh, that I'm seeing is just, it's not lining up with what you say that I, I want to have. Uh, has anybody ever been there? That, and I don't know about you, but I know that I've had t- opportunities and, and chances in my life where, where I've asked God for things in one season, and the next season God is saying, but I, I want you to abandon it. What do you do, church, when God puts you in this paradoxical situation where in one, uh, one season of your life, God, God gives you something, and then in the next, God is asking you to make a sacrifice with it. 
I don't know who needs to hear this, but I came to tell someone this morning that if God said it, keep walking by faith. Sometimes we may have to go through the valley of, of the shadow of death to get there, but hold on to your faith in God. Some, sometimes it may seem like the, not, the light will never shine in the midst of the darkness, but I believe that if we keep putting one foot in front of the other and keep trusting God along the way, that God will make a way somehow. The Bible tells us that faith is the substance of the faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And after everything God has brought us through in 2020 and 2021, like Jacob, I, I, I will go on record and say I may have to come out with a limp, but I'm holding on to God until God blesses me. Uh, I may have to go through some things, but I refuse to let God go right through here. I, I may have to walk away from some people right now, but I refuse to let God go. I may have to go without some things right now, but I refuse to let God go. I don't know what you're facing this morning, but I came to tell someone, hold on to your faith. I don't know what you're going through or your loved one may be experiencing right now as we look towards the end of 2021, but I just came to tell someone, uh, hold on to your faith. I don't know what you may be experiencing or what you may have heard, but I just came to tell someone, hold on to your faith. Church, I, I, I love this illustration about roses. One of the things about roses that I love is that in the midst of the beauty of a rose, there's also the sacrifice of the thorn. Oh, it's impossible to have a rose without a thorn. It, it's impossible to, to imagine the beauty without knowing that there's also a rose. Has anyone ever been stuck or trapped by, on, a, on a rose before, a rose bush? Yeah. Because you can walk by a rose bush and the thorn catch your clothes. But at the same time, while the thorn is catching you, holding you, or maybe snagging your, your garment, and when you look at the essence of the flower, you're able to see its beauty. That's what's going on in the text this morning. That's what God allows us to see through the life of Abraham. That's the testimony that, that is on display this morning, that God is showing us that even in the midst of the beauty, that there also can be a thorn. Abraham is in what I like to call a course of relentless faith 601. Abraham is instructed to trust God with the one thing he and his wife uh, had prayed for many years. You remember the story of Abraham and Sarah. Year after year, Sarah prayed for, for a child and God continued to say no. Year after year, uh, they continued to uh, call on God's name for a child and God continued to say no. And Abraham and Sarah decided to take matters into their own hands and they decided to help God out with the plan. And I don't know about you, but God God told me to tell someone that God does not need our plan B to get his will done. God is a God that when God speaks, that God's word has to return an answer. The Bible tells us that in their senior years, uh, so that no one could boast, so that Abraham couldn't boast that he did, and so that Sarah couldn't say that she had in vitro fertilization, God said, I'm going to wait until they're in the twilight of their life. And I'm going to bless them with eyes again. That's what the Bible tells us that when they should have been enjoying retirement, Isaac showed up on the scene. When, when Sarah should have been basking in the glory of being beyond uh, childbearing age, God said, hold up, Sarah, I'm not done yet. What do you do when God shows up in retirement? and give you something that, that, that defies the laws of science? What do you do when, when God shows up and, and blesses you in an illogical way? What, what do you do when God calls you uh, to sacrifice something at a time when you're saying, God, hold up, wait a minute. I have other plans in place. Oh, the Bible tells us that, that when Sarah heard what God was about to do uh, in her life during retirement, she laughed, and I don't want you to pass by that and miss that. Maybe you were asleep when uh, Mark read the scripture, but the Bible tells us that Abraham named him Isaac, and Isaac means he laughs. 
what God was about to do in Sarah's life was, was so unheard of that Sarah laughed at what God was about to do. Uh, not that she doubted God, but she couldn't believe what God was about to do at her age. The Bible tells us that uh, Abraham was in his 90s. Woo. Imagine God showing up saying you're about to be someone's father in your 90s. Yeah, someone said, no, thank you, right? In, 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 one chapter, they're, they're, uh, in one chapter, they laugh about God. They laughed about God's blessing, and in the next, God is saying, sacrifice him. Trust me with him. What do you do when God asks you to sacrifice the thing that you prayed for? What, what, what do you do when, when you've prayed for children and God has blessed you and then they become teenagers? What, what do you do when, when you've prayed for something and God is saying, now give it back to me? Oh, if you've ever been around teenagers, they, they turn into someone different when hormones kick in. Uh, I've talked with parents and worked with parents for years and I've heard it over and over and parents say, I don't know who they are. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I remind parents that remember when you were their age, your parent was saying, I don't know who you are. Yeah. But God calls us, even in those formative years of life, to still love them. And what I love about God is, is that God always is up to something. God is always behind the scenes. I, I call God the, the spiritual puppet master because God is always behind the scene pulling strings. Uh, when we pray and God does not show up on our time, I tell people don't worry about it because you don't know what God had to move out of the way to get this out uh, in this space. You don't know what God had to develop and grow on the other side of the coin in order to get you what you need. You don't know what God is doing in the, on the other side of town in order to bless you with what you have. Oh, that, that's the God that we serve. One, one minute Sarah and Abraham are, are praying for Isaac, and the next God is saying, sacrifice him. Oh, we read this in the 21st century. We read this in our vernacular, and we're, we know that what God is going to do on the other end, but just, just walk with Abraham for a minute. What do you do when, when God calls you to, to, to take your baby and, and, and drop them off somewhere? What, what do you do when God is saying, take, take them over here and leave them and trust me as you go? What, what do you do when, when God tells you, it all belongs to me, so give it to me? What, what do you do, church? <laughs> Someone said cry. Yeah. What do you do uh, when, when you're asked to trust God with what you've stayed up all night praying about? Mm. Beloved, and, and I always say anybody can say I trust God when there is nothing to sacrifice. And anyone can say, God, uh, 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 yes, uh, I, I'll give it to you when it's something I don't want. I did an illustration with the young people this morning, and I talked about how easy it is to, to sacrifice those things that we really don't want. But it costs us something when God is asking us to sacrifice something that we want. Oh, God is looking for a church. God is, is looking for a ministry. God is, is looking for a community that will trust God enough to respond with the answer yes. God is looking for a community that, that is saying, God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but my answer is yes. God is looking for a church that's saying, God, I don't know how we're going to change this community, but the answer is yes. God, I don't know what you're going to do in my life, but the answer is yes. Oh, can God trust you with a yes when he asks you to sacrifice your time in ministry? Can, can God trust a person sitting in your seat when, when God asks you to use your gifts and talents to build the kingdom of God? Church, Abraham trusted God with, with his all. Abraham had relentless faith. Abraham knew that everything he had, he, he realized and understood that it all belonged to God. Abraham believed by faith that God can do anything but fail. And that's the church that God is looking for in this season. God is looking for a church that say, I don't know how you're going to do it, God, but I believe you can do anything but fail. Oh, there's a question in the text, and I'll leave this with you and bid you adieu. What do you do when God asks you to trust him with the sacrifice? Church, there's only one answer to the question. 
And God showed me to share with someone, what, we do, what do we do? We walk by faith. Someone say, walk by faith. Oh, you got to say it like you really mean it. Walk by faith. It's right here in the text. Abraham had so much faith in God that when he reached his destination, this is what Abraham said. See, we read this, uh, the scripture so fast, we pass by it. Abraham told his servant, stay here with the donkey while me and the boy go over there to worship. And then we not I, we will come back to you. I'll say that again. Abraham told the servant, even before he took a step towards the destination that God was sending him, he said, we will be back to you. Abraham had so much faith in God that he spoke their return before he even walked towards the place of sacrifice. Abraham had so much faith in God. Abraham knew that if God could defy the laws of science to, to bless me and Sarah with this son, I, I know what God promised me back in Genesis. Uh, uh, Abraham said that he told me that I was going to be the father of many nations and this is the blessing that he gave me. And if I'm going to be the father of many nations the seed has to come through Isaac and Abraham said that I know that I can trust God with them oh church I I wish we had some things in in our lives that we would uh trust God with I wish we had some Isaacs in our lives that we say God I know you gave this to me and because you're asking me to trust you with it I, I'll trust you with it I wish I had a church that said God I don't know what you're going to do with this Isaac in my life but if you call me to sacrifice I'll sacrifice it Oh, I just came to tell someone this morning that like Abraham, you have to walk by faith when God is calling you to a place of sacrifice. You have to know that you know that you know that you know that can't nobody do you like God. You have to know and stand on a, a solid foundation and know that if God can't do it, that nobody can. Uh, the odds may be stacked against us, but I just came to tell someone, uh, never forget that God promised never to leave us nor forsake us. Uh, it may look like you are never going to get out of what you're going through but I just came to tell you that God is the a, a miracle worker it may look like things will never turn out the way that they're supposed to but I just came to tell you you can trust God with it when Isaac said I I see the fire and I see the wood but where is the sacrifice Abraham had so much faith in God he said that God himself will provide a lamb and that's what we need to start speaking over our situation that I see the fire in my life God I see the altar of sac the wood of sacrifice in my life God but I believe that you will provide a ram right on the nick in the nick of time that's what we need to tell our situations that we're going through and then you may be worshiping online wondering how it's going to work out. I just came to tell you that God himself will provide. You may be wondering how this situation in this country is going to turn around. I just came to tell someone God himself will provide. That's the message that Abraham is speaking to us today. Now, we may not know how it's going to work it out, but one of the things I love about God is he, God, has already figured it out. While we're wondering... God, how you're going to do it? God is saying, I've already figured it out. While we're walking, contemplating, is this going to work out? Work out. God is saying, I've already worked it out. While we're praying on our knees, God is saying, don't worry about it, uh, my child. I already have the answer for you. Oh, I just came to tell someone that may not be aware of the fact that when God calls us to sacrifice, God really doesn't need our sacrifices. When, when God calls us to give of our time and our, our resources and our talents and our gifts, God really doesn't need it. How, how do I know? Because the book of Genesis tell me that God spoke and things that never existed came into existence, that God said, let there be, and things that were never formed, uh, the imagination of God took root and came into the mention and into the earth. Oh, but church, God want to know that when, when God calls us to sacrifice our, our time, our talents, our gifts, and our resources, God wants to know, do we love him enough to trust him with it? 
God, God, God wants to know, do we love the Isaacs in our lives enough to put our faith in God and to bring it upon the altar? God wants to know, do we have enough trust in, in God that we can walk and not know where we're going? That's what, God, that's what God is speaking to us in this text. That's what God is, is teaching us about living a generous life, that when we are sold out and surrendered to God, that whatever God asks us for, that we believe that God will work it out. When we are sold out and surrendered to God, living a generous life, what we have is not a question of if we're going to give. It's God, how do you want it? Church, that's what God is calling us to do in this season. God is calling us to live a generous life. God, God is calling us to remember that God is still that same God that spoke, let there be. God is that, is that same God that's calling us to say, do you trust me to provide you with a ram? We started talking about a generous life. And one of the things that I know is, is that illustrations always leave, uh, stays in the mind longer than sometimes words. And so I'm going to ask Denise if she would help me again with this. We're talking about faith and about trusting God. This table here is God's table. This table here is the table that God trusts us with it. And I want to show you visually what it looks like when we trust God with it all. God says, the Bible tells us in the Old Testament that God says, trust me with the 10% of your time of your talent, of your resources, and I'll leave you with the 90. Trust me with your time and watch me supernaturally multiply it for my kingdom. Trust me with the 10% of your gifts that I've given you and watch me use them to transform lives. God is calling us to trust in this season. God is calling us to walk by faith and said, if God said it, I believe it. On this table, this is 10% of our time. 10% of our talents, 10% of our gifts, 10% of our resources. Over here, this is the table that God leaves us with. Look at the tables, God's table, what God is calling us to sacrifice, what God is leaving us with. And what I love about God is that God is so great that even when you look at the table, God's table versus the table God leaves us with, God still blesses our table to exceed our expectations, to exceed our needs, to exceed our wants. God is saying that if you just trust me with this here, I will supernaturally multiply it so you will never realize or miss that you trusted me with that. The Generous Life Sermon Series wasn't just about a commitment card. The Generous Life Sermon Series was God saying, do you trust me with this so I can breathe on this to exceed your expectations? Church, when we look at this, someone should be asking the question, how does God do it? Someone should be wondering and scratching their head, the one plus one is not adding up here. But one of the things that I love about God is that God adds by multiplying. What I love about God is God takes even the 90% that we don't always do what we're supposed to do with it, and God supernaturally blesses it while we never miss this here. Someone may be saying, Pastor, I don't have a, 
a talent. I, I'm not sure what my gifts are. Um, and uh, someone may be saying, I can't afford to tithe. And I'm going to say, you can't afford not to. God, the Bible tells us that we all have gifts. Even if it's just one gift, God says, use it to glorify me and watch me magnify it. Church, this is what God is calling us to. I just wonder what uh, our ministry would look like if we all made the commitment to live a generous life and to say, God, you know what? I don't know how you're going to do it with the 10% of my life. But in Malachi, it tells me to test you, to try you, to see once you multiply it, to see once you open up the windows. That, 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 that's what God is telling us to do. That's the only place in the book that God tells us to test him in Malachi. If you, think, if you don't believe it, read Malachi. God said, try me and watch what I will do with what you give me. When we think our time belongs to us, it doesn't. It belongs to God. When we think what we have belongs to us, it doesn't. We are the stewards. God is the owner. And when we start acting like owners, then we get this mixed up here. And we start questioning, God, I don't think I have enough time to fit you in as far as going down volunteering in the community. God, I don't have enough time to serve in, on a committee. God, how am I going to do all of these other things in, in the community and my family life and uh, all the other social gatherings that I have? H how am I going to serve at church? God, God is saying, get your priorities in order. Because a generous life is one that's surrendered to God. I'm going to say this and then I'll close with prayer. Someone may be worshiping with, me on, with us on today. And you may be saying, you know what? I've never tried living a generous life. And if that's you, guess what I'm going to say? Today is the right day to make the commitment to God. Someone may be saying, you know what, Pastor, I, I come to church, but I just can't find it in my schedule to volunteer to do anything else. And God is saying today is the day for you to get things in order and to put your priorities in order. Look at the tables. God at work and God blessing. If you're here on today and you're saying you've never tithed, one of the things I would encourage you to do is to try God. When God dealt with me about tithing, one of the things I can tell you is that I've never missed out on anything when I started putting my trust in God. There, there are things that I, I will confess that I have spent money on that have broken, torn up, worn out. But when I trust God and I make God the priority, things begin to shift and to turn around. And so if you're worshiping with us today and you're saying that I, I don't have the time, I'm going to say you do have it because God is the one giving it. Let us try God. God says, test me and watch what I will do in your life. A generous life is one that says, I believe God said it. A generous life is one that says, God, I know that you can do anything but fail. A generous life is, is one that says, God, I, I don't know how you're going to do it and what you're going to do with it but I trust you with it. Church, look at the tables. God's table and the one God leaves us with when we trust God. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for being the God who shows up in the midst of sacrificing. God, we give you thanks that you are the God who supernaturally blesses beyond our comprehension. God, we give you thanks that you are the God that can take the 10% and supernaturally multiply it for your glory. God, open our hearts, God, on today. Open our hearts that we will make the commitment, not to Hamilton United Methodist Church, God, but we will make the commitment to you, to trust you, to walk by faith, and to put your word to the test. God, be with us as we become the church who lives out what it means to be a disciple and to follow Jesus. Remind us that you have called us to surrender it all to you. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.
join us in our closing song. Um, if you would like to stand, if you're able, you may. And if you would like to be seated, if you're more comfortable, that's fine. But just please raise your voices and sing. I'm going to live so God can use me. seated at this time. At this time in our worship experience, it's our tithe and offering uh, time. It's our, this is a, also a portion of worship. Uh, when we give to God, that, that is our worship. And also it is a public statement of how much we really trust God. As I shared earlier, there are commitment cards that have been left at each of the uh, doors. And I ask, I pray that you have been in prayer with God all of this time uh, to seek God's face about what commitment that you're going to make to God. As I said moments ago, that this commitment is not the commitment to Hamilton. This is a commitment to God. This is your commitment. This is your act of faith. This is your declaration of saying, God, this is how much I trust you. And so I ask if you have not already completed your uh, commitment to God card that you would uh, pick it up and, and complete it. Uh, if you're worshiping with us online, uh, by tomorrow we're going to have this as an option for you to complete on the uh, church website. And so you'll be able to go to the website to complete it there as well. And so I pray that you will open your hearts and that you will hear God speak as you make a commitment and as you pray about, Lord, what can I do? to, to uh, build the kingdom. Lord, what can I do to be a servant in this ministry? How can I share my gifts? How can I share my talents? How can I share my time to tell somebody about how good Jesus is? Let us pray the offering prayer together. God of grace, thank you for providing unconventional blessings when we cannot trace your hand. Bless these gifts so that we may transform the world. Move in our hearts as we move towards Advent so that we become agents of grace. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask if you would stand for the benediction, and then we'll close out with our closing song. 
God of grace, God of mercy, be with us now. Be the light in our lives so that we may go out to shine so that the world may see you are still alive. Be with us as we leave this place, but never from your presence. Give us the courage that we will go out and tell somebody about your son, Jesus. May your face shine upon us. May your grace and mercy overshadow us daily. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed week, everyone. God bless you.